across the supply chain. Plants that wouldn't exist without the sacrifice made across this industry are running at nearly full capacity. Last year, many thought this industry would keep losing jobs, as it had for the better part of the past decade. Today, U.S. automakers have added 55,000 jobs since last June, the strongest job growth in more than 10 years in the auto industry. This plan just hired a new shift of 1,100 workers last week. Met, met one of your co-workers on, on, on the line. He said, thank you, Mr. President. I, I, I needed to get out of the house. I said, I know your, your wife really felt that way. I'm sure you were driving her crazy. The Dundee Chrysler plant will begin production of an American-made advanced technology fuel-efficient engine this December. The Sterling Heights Chrysler plant that was scheduled to close after 2012 will stay open and add a second shift of 900 workers next year. And when, it, when, it, when a plant thrives, that doesn't just affect the new workers, that affects the entire community. Now, it also helped that we took steps to stimulate demand, steps like cash for clunkers, which said if you traded your old car in for a new, more fuel-efficient model, you'd get a rebate. That program was good for automakers, it was good for consumers, but you know what? It was also good for the environment. It was more successful than we ever imagined, and it saved at least 100,000 jobs, giving dealerships sales numbers they hadn't had in years, and communities an economic boost they wouldn't have otherwise seen. So there is no doubt that the auto industry is growing strong. But look, the hard truth is this industry lost a lot of jobs in recent years. Some of those jobs aren't coming back partly because Automakers have become so much more efficient than they used to be. This is, a, this is a lean, mean operation. And so there are people who still lost their jobs, haven't been hired back, and it wasn't their fault. Mistakes were made in managing the company that weren't theirs. So that's why we've still also got to make targeted investments to encourage new private sector manufacturing growth. We've got to encourage clean energy. That's why we're taking steps to help communities revitalize and redevelop old, shuttered auto facilities, preparing them for new industries and new jobs and new opportunities. I'll give you an example. Those, those investments that we're making are helping to create an entire new advanced battery industry take root right here in Michigan. That industry was producing only 2 percent of the world's advanced batteries last year. But by 2015, we expect to produce 40 percent of the advanced batteries that go into our cars. And we're going to do it right here in Michigan, all across the Midwest. Investments like those mean jobs for American workers to do what they've always done, build great products and sell them around the world. So the bottom line is this. We've got a long way to go. But we're beginning to see some of these tough decisions pay off. We are moving forward. I want you to remember, though, if some folks had their way, none of this would have been happening. Just want to point that out. Right? I mean, this, 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 uh, this, plant, this plant and your jobs might not exist. There were leaders of the Just Say No crowd in Washington. They were saying, oh, standing by the auto industry would guarantee failure. One of them ca called it the worst investment you could possibly make. They said, they said we should just walk away and let those jobs go. I, I wish they were standing here today. I wish
wish they could see what I'm seeing in this plant and talk to the workers who are here taking pride in building a world-class vehicle. I don't think they'd be willing to look you in the eye and say that you were a bad investment. They might just come around if they were standing here and admit that by standing by a great American industry and the good people who work for it, that we did the right thing. It's hard for them to say that. You know, they don't like admitting when I do the right thing. <laughs> but they might have had to admit it. And I want all of you to know I will bet on the American worker any day of the week. You know, when World War II hit Pearl Harbor, we didn't throw up our arms and say, boy, this, this is tough. I don't know what we're going to do. We rolled up our sleeves. We got to work. And it was workers just like you, right here in Detroit, who built an arsenal of democracy that propelled America to victory. It's workers like you that built this country in the greatest economic power the world has ever known. It was workers like you that manufactured a miracle that was uniquely American. We face down impossible odds. We can rise to meet any challenge. As I was thinking about what to say today, uh, an extraordinary story was brought to my attention. I, I, I don't know if, if they're here, but I, I think some of you must know. Uh, 14 of your fellow employees at the plant won the lottery. Where are they? That's one, a couple of them right there. You know. Lunch is on them, by the way. Now, the first assumption people might make is, you know, after you win the lottery, you just kick back and you retire. Nobody, nobody fault folks for that. This is tough work. But it, most of them, they just want to keep on working. And, and I, 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 is, uh, is, 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 uh, is William Chanteau here? He not? Well, he bought, he was one of the guys who bought one of the winning, he bought the winning ticket, right? Turns out he, he used uh, some of the winnings to buy his wife one of the Jeep Grand Cherokees that you build right here. He called it a sweet ride. And he's going to pay for new American flags for his hometown because he loves his country. And he's going to keep coming to work because he loves this plant and he loves these workers. So don't bet against the American worker. Don't bet against the American people. We got more work to do. It's going to take some time to get back to where we need to be. But I have confidence in the American worker. I have confidence in you. I have confidence in this economy. We are coming back. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.